Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking all about protein. Protein is absolutely crucial for us to know about as bodybuilders. In fact, having a protein-seeking diet is probably one of the biggest things that separates bodybuilders from the rest of the population. Protein is one of the three macros with the other two being carbohydrates and fats. Each gram of protein has four calories and it is crucial for building muscle. This is because protein essentially makes up the building blocks of muscle tissue. And today I'll be giving you my updated view on protein along with everything you'll need to know in terms of implementing it in your diet. Quick outline for today, this is going to be an absolutely packed video. We're going to start off by talking about how much protein you need for optimal muscle growth. And to help us with that, we'll talk about the pros and cons of high protein. After that, we'll talk about what kind of protein you should be having for ideal results, including protein powders and supplements. Then we'll talk about when to have protein in terms of timing, including post-workout and bedtime scenarios. Finally, we'll talk about whether you need to change your protein intake when you're bulking versus when you're cutting. If you've been getting value from my content, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, first let's settle the question of how much protein you need for optimal muscle growth. And the answer is probably lower than what you might expect. You've probably heard of the one gram per pound rule where people say that you need at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day for optimized muscle growth. And the answer is actually a little bit lower than that. My minimum recommendation is 0.7 to 1.0 grams of protein per pound per day or 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight per day. And this bottom one is really the important one here. There is quite a bit of research backing this up at this point, so if you're above this bottom number, you're probably safe. Of course, I do still give a range because people's results will vary by their individual characteristics. Now there is a little caveat to this, and that is that this estimate is based off of lean body mass. So what if you're actually at a higher body fat percentage, like greater than 20% for men or greater than 28% for women? Well, in that case, you'll probably want to estimate your lean mass first. The other way you can get an approximation is to use grams per centimeter of height. So if you're 160 centimeters tall, then you might want to start with 160 grams of protein per day. Now, I actually quite do like the one gram per pound rule, and here's why. Even though our absolute minimum protein intake is something like 0.7 grams per pound per day, it doesn't hurt to go a little bit higher. The power of setting your protein intake a little bit higher than what's absolutely necessary means that you can drop one meal's worth of protein or convert it to other macros and still be okay. So I'd recommend that you be familiar with the lower amount of protein that you need to be hitting per day, but set your routine intake for about one meal's worth higher than that. All right, now that we've talked about how much protein you should be shooting for, let's talk about the pros and cons of a high protein diet. First of all, with the pros, protein is a very satiating macro. That is, if you're trying to lose weight, it can help people feel more full. And there actually have been some studies showing this effect. So if you find that you're always hungry in between meals, or if you're having trouble feeling satisfied, having a slightly higher protein intake might help. Next, protein sources can be enjoyable for a lot of people, depending on personal preference. And lastly, protein intake is safe within a reasonable limit, provided that you don't have established renal disease. So if you already do have kidney problems, I'd recommend talking to your doctor first. Moving on to the cons. First of all, protein is expensive. I really believe in having an efficient and sustainable approach to bodybuilding. And part of this is controlling costs. Now the next disadvantage of a high protein diet is that it can be inconvenient. That is, if you have a very unpredictable lifestyle, it isn't always easy to find good protein sources when you're on the fly. For example, if you're just walking into a convenience store or a restaurant, it might not be that easy to easily meet your protein targets. In our society, carbs and fat sources are much more readily available. Next, protein does use up calories from your calorie budget. Now, why is this a problem? This isn't so much of an issue when you're bulking and you have a lot of calories to go around. But if you're trying to lose fat and you're in a calorie deficit, you have a limited number of calories to play with. And having a lot of protein will displace the amount of calories you have to spend on carbs. Carbs are a very important macronutrient for bodybuilding since they fuel us for training. And it's really important that you maximize your training performance, whether you're bulking or cutting. We'll talk about how to deal with this at the end when we talk about bulking and cutting. Last disadvantage of high protein is that some people will get digestive issues. I will note, however, that this has a lot to do with the specific protein source that you're using. So you might be able to play around with things to improve your digestion. Okay, now let's talk about what specific protein sources you should be aiming for to keep in your diet. First of all, I recommend having the majority of your protein coming from whole food and complete protein sources. In general, whole foods are going to be more nutritious. Plus, if you're trying to lose weight, whole foods are going to be more satisfying than processed foods. And processed foods here includes supplements. Now, what do I mean by complete protein sources? Protein is made up of amino acids. 
and not all protein sources are made equal. A complete protein source will have all the amino acids that you need for muscle growth, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy. And these typically have all the amino acids that you'll need, but incomplete sources won't. Incomplete protein sources typically come from plant-based foods like vegetables, whole grains, and nuts. This isn't to say that you can't maximize muscle growth as a vegetarian. As long as you have the right incomplete protein sources to balance out your amino acid profile, you'll be fine. But as a no-brainer for people who eat everything, I'd recommend having the majority of your protein coming from complete protein sources just to make sure that you cover your bases. Now in terms of how much protein should come from whole foods, this isn't a definite rule, but in general, I recommend trying to have at least 80% of your calories coming from whole foods. Now, moving on to supplements. Supplements are useful for bodybuilders mainly just because of convenience. They don't take any preparation and you can take them with you when you go. My top pick for protein supplements would just be to have a plain whey protein powder. Casein is another option as a slow digesting protein, but for the most part, you don't really need this except in special situations. Lastly, what supplements do I not recommend? In general, I don't recommend BCAAs or individual amino acids. BCAAs or branch chain amino acids are a set of amino acids that people tout to be superior for muscle growth. They are certainly important, but the thing is, if you have a complete protein source like whey, you're gonna have all those amino acids in it already. So I don't think you're gonna get much advantage. And the same goes from trying to consume individual amino acids. I'm currently not sponsored by any supplement companies, so this is my unbiased opinion. Okay, now let's talk about when you should be having protein. So your protein timing and distribution. My overarching rule in this regard is to evenly distribute your protein over four to six meals, three to five hours apart. Now there is research suggesting that we should be spreading things out over at least four meals to optimize muscle growth. And the upper limit is just chosen for practicality. I don't want people's entire lives to be structured around when their next meal is gonna be. In terms of protein timing, you've probably heard of bodybuilders trying to time their protein intake every three hours on the dot. This really isn't necessary, and as a rough rule of thumb, I recommend having protein every three to five hours. And if you think about it, this really isn't that hard to hit. If you were to spread your protein over four meals, five hours apart, you could have breakfast at 7 p.m., lunch at 12, another meal at 5 p.m., and a pre-bed meal at 10 p.m. And you'll hit all your bases really well. The exact timing does depend on how big your protein bolus is. So if you have a really big meal with a lot of protein in it, you can delay the next meal a bit. Now, as a personal tip, I actually recommend shooting for five meals per day. And the reason here is that if you end up missing one meal, you're still hitting that minimum four meals per day target. And if you drop that one protein bolus, you'll still be hitting your minimum protein targets if you set your protein a little bit higher than necessary, as I mentioned before. I think this is a useful tip for sustainability. If you end up being really busy and you miss a meal, or say if you're out with friends and you can't get protein, but you can only get carbs and fats, then you can still hit your overall protein targets without missing a beat. Okay, let's talk about a couple of special scenarios when it comes to protein timing. That is post-workout and pre-bed. You'll hear about the anabolic window where people will say that they need to slam their protein shake as they're walking out of the gym to make sure that they're staying anabolic. In reality, this really isn't a thing. However, I do recommend trying to get in some protein within one hour after your workout. As long as you do that, you're gonna be pretty much optimal in terms of muscle growth. Now, I'll note that my three to five hour rule does apply to pre and post-workout nutrition. Let's say you had lunch at 12 and you worked out at one. If you didn't have your next meal until 4 p.m., you'd probably still be fine from a protein standpoint. And this is because you already have protein circulating in your system from your previous meals. On the other hand, if you worked out fasted first thing in the morning, you'd probably wanna have some protein right away after your workout. Okay, our other special situation is pre-bed nutrition. The idea here is that you wanna have some protein in your system to last you throughout the night to maximize muscle growth throughout those nighttime hours. So for optimal hypertrophy, I do recommend having some protein before you go to bed. In terms of protein sources, I'd recommend that you get your protein in the form of a mixed meal or slow acting protein. The idea here is that you wanna have a slow release of your protein while you're sleeping overnight. You can achieve this by using a slow acting protein like casein, for example. However, as long as you consume your protein in the form of a mixed meal, and by that I primarily mean having some other food source that slows down digestion, such as fiber or fat. As long as you have some of that other component in it, it will effectively do the same thing as having a slow acting protein source because fats and fiber will slow down digestion. So pre-bed is typically where I'll stack more of my fat sources to get that slower digestion effect. And if I don't have a lot of calories for fat, say if I'm cutting, I'll include some vegetables with my pre-bed meal. Okay, lastly, let's talk about bulking versus fat loss. That is, should your protein intake change when you're trying to lose fat? My overall recommendation is that protein should stay around the same between your bulking and fat loss phases. As long as you're hitting the recommendations that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you should be fine in terms of muscle retention. 
Now, some people may find it helpful to increase protein slightly if it's helpful for satiety. If protein is a really filling macro for you and it helps you adhere to your diet, then having slightly higher protein may help. But as I mentioned in the pros and cons section, there is a price to high protein. And that is you won't have as many carbs to play around with, which is a problem, especially if you're in a calorie deficit. So this is typically why I recommend keeping protein around the same. You probably want to be shooting for the minimum amount of protein necessary to maintain your muscle mass, which is going to be around those recommended targets. When you're trying to lose fat, you really want to maximize your carb intake because this is going to help you train harder. And maximizing your gym performance is going to be crucial for muscle retention or muscle growth if you're trying to recomp. I'll note that in some cases, including for myself, protein actually goes a bit down when I'm cutting. This is because when I'm bulking, I tend to set my protein a little bit higher just because I have more macros to play around with. And I also get more protein from my carb sources. Remember things like rice, pasta, and potatoes also contain protein and it does add up. When I switch to a fat loss phase, I reduce my protein so that I'm really just hitting the minimum amount I need to hold on to muscle. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. In particular, how much protein do you eat per day? Let me know. If you wanna learn more about bulking, check out this video where I go into depth into everything you need to know for a successful bulk. If you've been getting value from my channel, make sure you subscribe and share the channel with your gym buddies so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.